To be able to win every championship from Legacy Tour in the Forza Builders Cup without too much effort, it is important you choose the right cars. So I've put together this video of the best car in each series of Legacy Tour in Forza Motorsport. Let's get into it. So we start off with Vintage Hatch, where the best car is quite comfortably the Dodge Shelby Omni GLHS. It's far from the easiest thing to drive though, so if you want something easier to drive, the Toyota AE86 is the best option. But that is a fair bit slower, so I recommend sticking with the Dodge. It has very soft suspension, and it's front wheel drive, so it's full of understeer and gets tank slappers of lift off oversteer. So it's a bit like driving a boat on choppy waters while sitting on a rocking chair. But even though it's all over the place, it is actually kind of fun to drive, if you can handle it. Next we have Retro Tuners, for which the Nissan Silvia Club Ks is the best car. The Galant VR4 actually has a higher PI rating, and the Toyota Celica has an equal PI rating to the Nissan Silvia, and yet the Nissan Silvia is quite comfortably better than both, which just goes to show why you shouldn't rely on the PI ratings. In fact, the Mazda Savannah RX-7 is the second best car, not too far behind the Nissan Silvia, and that is a fair bit lower on the PI rating. But anyway, let's focus on the best car, as that's what we're here for. The Nissan Silvia, while being able to blitz everything, is quite a nice car to drive. It has good front-end grip, but it can get a bit of oversteer in the middle and exit of corners, although that said, the oversteer is always very predictable and controllable, so you shouldn't end up emulating the second hand of a clock by spinning 180 degrees every 30 seconds. Moving on to classic sport, the best car to choose is the BMW 2002 Turbo, but it's extremely close between this and the Holden Tirana, and the fastest isn't actually the best. Let me explain. First of all, you can forget all I just said about how the PI rating isn't reliable, because in this case it actually is, because both have identical PI ratings. Based off my testing, I generally found the Holden Tirana was marginally faster, often by only a few tenths. However, because it weighs a fair bit more, and just understeers quite a lot, the BMW is actually the better choice for this championship. Not only is it just nicer and easier to drive with a very good balance to it, it is also a better platform to upgrade upon as you progress through the championship. But because it's so close, if you still want to use the Holden Torana, it won't be a lot worse. For the final championship, it's Exotic Speed, where the best car is the Lotus Esprit V8, but it's a very similar story to the last one, except here the PI ratings are misleading again. The Lamborghini Countach and Lotus Esprit are more or less equal. The Countach has a slight straight line speed advantage, but it weighs a fair bit more, so the Esprit is better through the corners. As the Esprit is much nicer to drive, it is the better platform to do upgrades on as you progress through the championship. It's very nimble in the corners and has a near perfect balance, in contrast to the Lamborghini Countach, which just understeers like crazy. Finally, in the Legacy Reward Showcase, you'll have to make a difficult choice between the Porsche 911 GT2 and the Porsche 911 GT2. I had to do a lot of extensive testing to make sure I got this spot on, and it's the Porsche 911 GT2 which you'll find is better than the Porsche 911 GT2. And just like that, you should have completed Legacy Tour. If you found this video helpful, be sure to check out my videos for all the other tours of the Forza Builders Cup, and of course, make sure you like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you.